The Tiny Instrument of Death. Oh, I've been asked to review this weapon so many times, and I'm happy to finally oblige. This is a very, very old weapon and one of the most unique in the entire game. I think the only weapon that does anything like this is the Paper Shredder, where you can guide the rocket around, and I had a lot of fun doing that in-game. It's very, very cool if you know what you're doing, and I would like to see somebody hitting a shot where they curve it around a corner and hit an enemy or do something really cool with it. I think that'd be a very creative way to use this weapon and a great way to get the most out of it. As you can see, this thing is sporting a quarter of a million damage per second, which is, uh, well, little other than an insightful look into how it doesn't actually factor reloads, because uh, you should probably cut that into a fourth of what it started with, because it's really about 65,000 DPS. However, this weapon is actually very, very good for large crowds of zombies, so let's get into it. When you shoot this weapon, you can guide a little rocket, and it, I think the best, most effective way to do it is to either barrel stuff an enemy, shooting them at point blank, or aiming directly at the ground, because it has a massive explosive radius. I am running crippled on this, because that's how it was was given to me and I'll explain whether or not that's good later on when we talk about the best perks for this but you can see we also have affliction on this I think that's probably your best bet I doubt this thing can have the headshot abilities because this can't hit headshots so either slowed and snared or affliction is perfectly fine for a weapon like this where you're shooting so slow I think affliction is the best way to go in terms of you know hoping that you don't have to actually reload currently affliction is doing like terrible damage so it might be okay for you to run slowed and snared I'm gonna let you guys decide for that yourself but you can see with my affliction build I can just spam it into a crowd it'll hit tons of enemies all at once and uh, it'll eliminate them very slowly. Unless, of course, I want to shoot again, which I'm going to have to do for the fatties and the mist monsters. And that's pretty much it. This weapon is one of the first weapons that could be technically an explosive weapon while also being Shadow Shard. Of course, you can see it is consuming eight energy cells per shot, which is extremely expensive. I had to craft about a thousand energy cells in 10 minutes of getting you guys gameplay for this thing. So I hope you appreciate the video because this was expensive for me. This weapon is very, very cool cool, very, very fun. Uh, I don't think it's any kind of primary. I'm sure a lot of you saw this coming. I doubt that this is going to be my next main weapon. I won't be leveling up my own copy, unfortunately, but I was at least able to show you guys this one today. Thank you so much to Tempest for dropping me a copy of this. I can uh, show you guys how this thing should be performing when it has the maximum perks. Now, getting into those perks, let's talk about what you should be running on this. Usually, I show you my own copy so I can show you all of the different perk options, but these are so standard that I don't even think it's necessary. If you have the six perk for Affliction, give it to Damage to Affliction. If it has sold and snared, give it damage to sold and snared. This is a water copy, so I had to look for enemies that were fire to actually show this thing and its, uh, you know, maximum usefulness. And it actually even did okay against nature enemies, which surprised me because I will be doing one quarter of the damage to nature enemies because of the way that elements work. But I would recommend going energy on this. It's the boring answer. It's the usual answer that'll be most effective to, you know, most elements. Currently, as I record this, this won't be true in the future. Uh, nature missions are extremely common, so fire might be the best in the immediate moment if you're watching this on the day of the release. But if you're watching this in the future, energy is probably the way to go and you can see that we're running crit on this and that's where i want to talk more about this this weapon is i believe capable of running you know crit rating crit damage in any of the configurations or triple damage or whatever you absolutely need reload i'm not even going to recommend any other perk in this slot there's not really a choice you absolutely want reload because that's what that dps thing i mentioned at the beginning was about and that's that yeah it shoots 2.7 shots per second but it actually can't because you're consuming eight ammo shots which is the entirety of your magazine every single shot and it has about a base 2.4 2.5 reload so you need a reload speed in order to be actually shooting this thing as fast as possible and i cannot recommend anything else so once you got the reload in place uh double damage would be way more consistent you saw that for most of these enemies uh you know you don't crit most of the time i'm only critting 38 percent of the time however you can see that in a crowd of enemies every single enemy actually has its own individual chance to crit so you are going to have a lot of opportunities there but most importantly and i think this is the kicker most enemies aren't going going to need a crit. Uh, a lot of the baby zombies, a lot of the usual zombies, you know, the bulk of what you'll be attacking dies immediately, and the mist monsters take about two to three or four shots, depending on your power level, the configuration, etc. And another thing I want to mention is something I've been talking about in some recent videos, and that's that if you take at least three shots to kill a mist monster, statistically, you would have crit by then. And if it's going to take more than three shots with a double damage build anyway, you might as well run crit. I mean, that's just kind of my line of thought on this. Obviously, if you want to be doing consistent high damage, and you don't want to worry about, you know, hoping for a crit, crossing your fingers that you're going to do the most damage. Double damage reload is probably the best way to go for that use case. I was given crit on this, and I don't think it held me back at all. I had a great experience, and the only times I ever died was really just me standing in a crowd of zombies not eating my coconuts, which was basically my own fault. So that pretty much wraps up the Tiny Instrument of Death. The perks are very, very boring. There's not really much I can recommend there besides, you know, double damage or crit, like I already talked about. But the weapon itself is such a fun thing, and I'm so glad to talk about it, show it to you guys, because if anybody was 
wondering, hey, what about the Tiny Instrument of Death? I haven't used that since it came out like two years ago. Uh, yeah, it's still good. It still does lots of damage, and it is a very, very fun weapon. If you're the kind of person who wants to throw on a uh, pistol loadout, I'll show again what I've been using in this video, then you can just go ahead and, you know, shoot into crowds of zombies and do lots of explosion damage while also having a Shadow Shard variant, which is funny because it's not technically an explosive weapon and it's not doing the damage of a rocket launcher, but very, very few weapons have an explosion radius while also allowing you to go Shadow Shard, and it's kind of an interesting thing in that respect. That just about wraps it up, though, you guys. If you want to support the channel, feel free to use code MIST at checkout. I'd really appreciate it. Like the video if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, have a nice day. <laughs> and then